Hello, and welcome to our final Q&A for the festival, aka Fall Camp. It's so bittersweet to be here tonight, but I'm really happy um, that I'm here with our filmmaker, Jose Cardoso, of our final gala film. It's amazing. Uh, this whole journey has been truly incredible and very inspiring. I just want to say a quick and thank you to our presenting partner, the Canon Media Fund. My name is Nikki Little, Wapshki Mayangan, and I'm the artistic director at Imaginative. I have orange chin length hair. Um, I'm wearing a blue turtleneck with a checkered blue uh, sweater and I'm sitting in Imaginative's library, which in front of some books, gifts and some medicines. And joining me today is Jose. And Jose, did you wanna introduce yourself quickly? Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. I'm very grateful to Imaginative. Um, my name is Jose Cardoso. I'm in Ecuador, in Cuenca, in the Andean mountains. Uh, I'm at home, I'm in the attic. You can see a brick wall behind me. I'm, uh, I have brown hair. I have also a brown turtle <laughs> sweater. I have lenses, I have brown eyes. Uh, my son says I have orange eyes, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you for joining us today and um, thank you for being a part of this evening. I just want to take a quick moment to thank our programming committee for this year. Um, it really was uh, a truly uh, beautiful year and also just a really great collective of folks that came together. We have Jaina Castrillon, Jennifer Lee Smith, and Siku Alulu. And it was such a joy to be able to share space and discuss all of the works with you in such a deep deeply caring way. Um, this year has been challenging for, uh, for everyone and you created such a safe space for us to be able to discuss all of the artistic works as well as the cultural topics um, while going through hard times here. So thank you so much. I just want to say that it really was a su supportive place. Um, but yeah, let's start with tonight's gala. So Jose, you've been making this film for a while um, and you shared with us on through your submission, um, your connection to the Amazon, through the land, and specifically the river that connects you, uh, your community, to the community that you went into. I was wondering if you could um, talk a little bit about this connection to land, because one of my favorite lines in the film is, um, what stories does the land hold? And I thought that was such a profound moment for myself as a viewer. Um, and just thinking about Indigenous cinema and focusing the lens through the story to reveal itself. Could you speak to your approach in relation to both the land and the community that you were invited to work with? Thank you. Thank you for, for this very interesting question. Um, uh, I live in the Andes mountain range uh, there is four rivers that, that cross this, this city. All the rivers goes to the Amazon, um, goes down th uh, through the mountain to the Amazon. Um, we, we connect in, in so many ways to, to, to Amazon. Uh, we depend ecologically to uh, uh, the Andes to, to Amazon. And um, just because I don't want uh, this conversation to end, be before I mention this, uh, we have uh, also one of the connections we have is the danger we are experiencing with the oil extraction and mining extraction. Uh, and uh, I think this time, especially with the new right wing government, uh, I didn't want to, to mention it. Maybe at the end, I can say a little bit more about this. Uh, my approach to, to to the community came from two sides. Uh, one is uh, this um, activist side of, of, and the other one is the storyteller, which is more, I think, more central in my work, in my life. I came from illustration that took me to stop motion, that took me to hold the camera finally. And this was Evian. She's the first time I hold the camera uh, because before I was working for 10 years, in Amazon with friends, I, I made very good friends with the Shuar culture. And during 10 years, we were publishing uh, or trying to, to publish. Finally, we, we, we did publish some stories. I, I was very interested from my storytelling uh, work to, and to, to find stories that 
I, I really love myths. I think it, it, it talks to a unconscious part of, of, of me. So I, I understood that Amazon had very, very old, beautiful and deep myths. Uh, I, when I was finally invited to a Chuar community, uh, I knew already myth, a bit of mythology and I knew Evianch and I knew uh, this was no stories for actual people. This is reality, and uh, but I never expected that Evianch was going to catch my friend's brother-in-law. At the time we arrived to the community to film a documentary about myths. Yeah, that you can really do set. I get a sense of like. Um the breadth of your practice when we're entering the film. Um, you know, certainly you see some of your artistic quality coming through, especially I think um, there was a moment where you're painting, you watercolor in a book um, yeah. uh, in orange, in that beautiful orange, and you can see all of those traces. And I was curious about how you came into filmmaking. So I'm happy that you talked about that. Um, mm. And it is really interesting, like, I suppose, you know, I have a question later around time and the timing of you arriving and just what unfolded um, in terms of uh, your your friends, uh, your brother-in-law, your friend's brother-in-law, Pedro. And, um, you know, I was just wondering if you could speak to um, the use of dreams because dreams are so prevalent within the story and then also just within the daily lives of the community. And so I was wondering if you could um, speak to the use of dreams in your work and also how that furthered your ideas around uh, ceremony and also around time and relationship to Iwanch. Yeah, um, so time is very fundamental in the making of the film and in the film itself. Um, we, we, at the, when you get into the film, you see there is two two times, two dimensions, two worlds. And on the manufacture of the film, uh, it uh, took years and years, not because we wanted to be like that, because, but because it was just, it began very organically by friendship and by curiosity. First time I was there, I, I was not looking for a story. I was just knowing people because of, uh, of curiosity and getting in touch and, and becoming friends. And then this curiosity uh, begins. Uh, and this uh, made that the film uh, didn't develop it itself, but uh, through a lot of, of time. And uh, even when we finished the film, editing was also a matter of patience. Uh, so this not knowing we were doing a film was 10 years of unconscious pre-production and then filming and editing took 10 also more or less than seven years. Um, so time is <laughs> it is uh, a fact that, that has to do with, with Evian. And about the dreaming, uh, it's beautiful that we approach the film this way. I, I, I think it's very central of, of the film uh, because how can you approach uh, to understand another reality that is told in these stories it's difficult to, to get close to it um, and uh, but at the same time it's so close as as every night we go to sleep uh, we go to bed we go to another place uh, without asking yourself anything that happens there and uh, but there, there, there could be a relation even we if we are from the city it doesn't have to do with with amazon i think uh, but actual people in the amazon they do uh, take attention of this they don't only take it's not like taking notes or what do i dream yet as i know they wake up every day of, of their life at 4 a.m to talk about dreams and listen about the other's dreams to decide what to do in the day and to understand if, if something is going what's going on around on this um, invisible uh, world that exists also um, 
I that I I believe that because of this wisdom that is there, uh, uh, and because the the very palpable um, situation of planet of planet Earth in, in danger now, we must really listen to to indigenous cultures and we must find also the wisdom in ourselves uh, this connection that exists and maybe our culture has not pay attention um, i think uh, th this is also a central central on the making of the film yeah you asked some really profound questions at the beginning like universally profound questions as you know, you're opening the book, you're looking through sort of questioning what maybe a Western context and a local uh, context to the community. And I thought that was really, um, you know, really engaging. And I appreciated how within the dreams you utilize um, technology and the glitch and shifting and the layering and the textures of your visuals to help us as the viewer um, be transported and then also not give too much away. And I think for me, that was also really important. You know, um, you showed like parts, it kind of, you could see the relationship that you had with the community and the folks there because, you know, you could show some parts of the ceremony, but you didn't show everything. And then you utilize for myself, for my interpretation, you utilize um, your aesthetic and your visual language to take away some of that because it's not for us, you know, that's for the community, that's their interpretation, that's sort of where they go. And I really, I really liked that a lot and thought that was like um, really intriguing. And then also brought me as a viewer to be able to think, you know, to be able to be not cued, but to be able to think about a different world and a different portal, mm -hmm. if you will, and to be able to take me there. And so I really like that abstraction a lot. And I was also wondering, you know, this year we're called fall camp uh, at the festival and certainly there's a lot of fire and a lot of gathering around the fire, um, sharing ceremony, um, engaging, you know, when they go and ask for the shaman uh, for help and the discussions with the shaman as well. Um, and then also the celebration at New Year's Eve, there's like the jumping of the fire and the fire becomes like this really central uh you know character if you will as well and i was wondering if you could speak to um the significance of the fire uh from your perspective uh, yeah beautiful question i i, I was I, I am very happy with, with these questions i i am um, i'm not uh, i'm not uh, uh, the person to answer this question this is like very deep questions and uh, but uh, i can ask the film says at the beginning this is not the vision of a wise man or a, or an anthropological or this is just the the perception of a person who who was there and um, in that sense of inner meaning of of, of fire uh, during the film uh, when when he, fire is very important in the communities you can see that is always a, around fire that, that the stories are told. Um, I think maybe this is a common thing, like in uh, maybe in, in, in communities around the world. And um, you can see some 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 moment the fire goes up and up and up, and you go to another place. Uh, uh, I was thinking also when you falling asleep, maybe sometimes you you can feel this up <laughs> so fire flow up dreams flow up um, maybe this is like a portal a transportation to to um, another place and and dreams you wake up and also fire fire turns off <laughs> i don't know it's uh, it's very beautiful to think and to work around these very essential elements and ideas and about the aesthetics, this um, a glitch and this uh, way of, of, of telling the story, um, I think my, my own uh, relation with dreams was taking serious for the filming and uh, give me the freedom to speak. Uh, 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 I'm not from, from the community, I'm not a Chuaro, I'm very close to, to, to these friends. I think this, film only 
like really touches the the, the big uh, root is there and so i how can i talk how can i speak about this but by by giving a, a personal perception and um i think the my freedom to tell the story was on the invisible fragments, the, the ones that no one could film because it's impossible to take a camera to this another dimension, but it is possible to make an, a perception, to tell the perception that I have. And um, so this emptiness of, of images that was only story uh, finds me full of images because I was living that and I was full of images and it was, so it was a natural result of the situation. And I do think it also allows the viewer to have um, a moment like almost like a meditative moment. I don't know for you, like, you know, whenever I'm around a fire, I sort of stare into the fire, I get really introspective and it just you know, my perception changes with the world. And I thought that was also really wonderful too, how it gave the viewer that space to experience um, what is about to happen, what has happened. And perhaps let's talk about a little bit, you know, you had a different idea when you were going uh, to the community and you were invited. And then the series of, event of events where Pedro went missing and how was that sort of, how did you have to pivot, if you will, um, in terms of thinking about your initial idea and then um, being able to be there and be respectful and to understand that like you've had to just sort of, from my interpretation, you kind of had to like wait and find times where it was appropriate to like bring out the camera or discuss this as things were unfolding um, in real time. Yeah, um, thank you for the question. I, I, it's also beautiful to think again about this introspective uh, a state that humans get when they are close to fire, no matter what culture, no matter what anything. Uh, and for me, as I said, I was full of images that I like was so excited to, to share in these moments that have no image. But also I wanted, at the end, you can see there is a moment of a um, black uh, uh, screen and there, finally, there is a, a, a story about what Pedro lives. So that was, I wanted to extend it as much as I could that, that I was, uh, because my, my intention was people in cinema to, for a moment, stop needing new images, but the imagination of everyone in the, in the room started to, to, to work. And about what was my, my first uh, uh, idea to, to be there and what happened, uh, it was very beautiful, like destiny, I feel, because uh, we, we really, it took years to be, for us to be there. And then when we were there, it took also a while to be accepted by people who was not my friend. We were the friends of a friend who lives in the community. So we had to be introduced to this community. I, I was in touch with Shuar people for years. And this took me to a Shuar people who lives on the other side of the, of the mountain. So they preserve more the, the, these stories because of geographic uh, situation. And uh, so this asking for permission was following the times of the people we were asking permission for. And when the permission was over, uh, uh, we, we were accepted. We had a chance to take the camera. Everybody knew uh, our intentions and what, what we were looking for. Uh, so was every, the, 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 the path was open for the documentary making. Yeah, and just to circle back to that moment that you talked about with the, the black and um, actually, Pedro, when the when the boom mic comes in, or and he listens in the in the headphones, and he's just like, and then it, you just sort of, I think the line is something like, listen, or really listen, or something, and then it went black, and it just really felt for me like the audience was like, okay, slow down and actually listen, like you're witnessing something, and then the audio fills up the space again. It was really beautiful. I was like, that's so smart. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you. And, 
And so um, maybe perhaps we should talk a little bit about, you know, you had mentioned going to the community, the process and the protocol that you had to follow. And, um, you know, it was really interesting when you got to the bridge and you called uh, um, and your, your contact wasn't there um, because of everything that had happened. And there was a relative that had come. And then we passed by actually um the signs for no oil no no tourism and all of that stuff and that you know that activism that you wanted to speak upon maybe let's talk a little bit about that and speak to speak to that because it is you know a very real issue right now yeah thank you very much because uh, when uh, this conversation finished and i had made, not mentioned that thing I, I will not have the good dreams tonight <laughs> so um uh, lungs of the planet is what is amazon known for and what is we are all trying to resist to take care because we, we cannot let so and um, such a vital organ of the body to 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 get ill so uh, but there is it is not only this transformation or this uh, source of oxygen um uh, or maybe medicine that has, is also need, know the Amazon that uh, they are destroying a place where you can discover so many medicine that will be of benefit for humanity. There is something else too. Uh, I, I do agree with this with these concepts. Uh, I, I I have been healed also with and, and all my team, all, all our team, the team that was there. We are from the city. We live in the city. When we go to the Amazon. Uh, we're not used to a lot of things. We all we always get ill, and 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 you see that the, uh, the conditions are difficult from someone from the city. But at the same time, the medicine is very good. They uh, have like a, such a big knowledge for everything and the plants, and you you get healed by them. And and this is a big uh, you learn uh, that there is a, a deep wisdom there. But then it comes spirituality when you touch this situations this for I, I could tell experience for a long time from this and i love to to to, to talk about this because I, I i've seen how spirituality and medicine for example mix for even material things like a like a broken leg and um so the one of the inner goals or maybe main goal of the film is to make this this reason for protect Amazon spirituality uh, uh, is something that we, we must also take in consideration. Uh, Evian's land is an untouched land and is untouched for respecting respecting the souls of humans. The belief is that all human who die goes to these places so these places must be taken care uh, and you pass there when you pass there you don't speak when you don't sleep there this is uh, respected even in that sense no no don't say to to, to cut trees there or to uh, those places are, are untouched um i think i i encourage people to follow the news to try to make a network uh, there is uh, organizations that are all the time announcing how things develop. Uh, there is one that is called Confenaye, that is a confederation of national indigenous Amazonic uh, in Ecuador people. And also in the film social networks, we will be informing all the time. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, uh, Hopefully, I was incisive enough. Uh, we, we were we, we did our work well to to get into the inner being of the spectator, uh, of the person who sees the film, who, who listens the film, and put a seed to sow a new restlessness question about Amazon, about life, about the necessity of preserve the place where the spirit lives. Definitely. And I did see, like I did experience or I did um, interpret a deep risk 
expect, even though, even in the way describing the relationship to Eve, 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 oh, sorry, how do you Evian. pronounce it? Evie Inch. Evie Inch. And so even yeah, in that relationship to how that was being described, there was that deep uh, respect that was there. And there's almost like that idea of balance as well, or um, taking into consideration um, the whole holistic view of, of the community. And I thought that was so important. And it did come through for me, um, you know, just like the moments, like how serious or how committed um, they were about protecting and how it was for you to get there that journey also um, to not only as an internal but also as a like a, a larger concept as well so thank you for sharing that and so i was wondering we have about time for a couple more a couple more thoughts and i was wondering now that you, you know some time has gone by how, how how do you feel about the film now or how is what do you have any reflections or has anything changed for you in terms of uh your relationship to the film yeah, eh, I feel relief. <laughs> I feel relief. In so many years eh, of working on this and finally to be finished and then to be shared with the world is, is a big relief. And maybe is naive or pretentious for me, but I feel that I've done a, my part. But I, 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 as, I, as I say, I think I, I, this was something that I was really feeling like an urgency of sharing because eh, we had the blessing and the and the a chance to be on on this moment on this specific moment that that by a small example can show a deepest uh, a, a, a deep way of thinking of perceiving reality and i really needed to share it to to, to the world so um i I think that um, the, there is a necessity to listen to this culture, uh, that the government doesn't listen. And that is a, a big thing now. People need to listen, people need to share this message and weave together a net of resistance of this place that is a place that has wisdom for the benefit of the whole humanity. Uh, from the ambition of a small group that at the end will be ben the benefit of this sad destruction that we all hope it doesn't happen. Uh, so, so for me, it's a big relief and uh, um, I will continue to, 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 to be a, a part of this uh, weave of this net that, uh, that we hope it, 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 it hitting eh? in, in, my, in the Andeans, we stop mining by a uh, by, by by this net, at least temporarily, you know, there is always this. There will be this this, this trying of, of of doing this um, this mining and, um, but uh, also in the uh, from from the perspective of the story, uh, I'm so happy that we could share this with with the with people and uh, we share with the community when we were in work in progress. We invite them and we made a. Um, a presentation uh, for them in a beautiful cinema here in the city. It was very emotive. Uh, when we finish, we say again, we watch it twice. <laughs> it was beautiful. And Pedro didn't arrive. And this is the 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 the, the, the one of the things that that there, there is the necessity of doing uh, things there. And Pedro was helping his uncle to to make um a new. What's the name? Uh, like a garden for, of, 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 of food. So he got to stay and he couldn't come. So for me, it's very important to come back uh, again uh, with the film finished to, to find Pedro. Now he's um, 10, 11 years older. Um, so there is a, 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 a feel like, like of, of some work done, but a new beginning as well. <laughs> Definitely. And I'm so happy that you shared the, that story of them being able to see it and then wanting to see it for a second time. That really warms my heart. And I do think like I'm really happy that you submitted it to Imaginative. Certainly we have um, a lot of documentaries or a lot of topics touch on um, relationship to land, especially like in terms of uh, Indigenous relationship and worldviews to land. And so I certainly think that there's a lot of folks that can relate 
um, in our audiences and in our in our kinship or our circle of filmmakers that were really resonated with it really definitely came forward for me um, and I just wanted to say I guess do you have we've gotten a lot of questions this week around like um you know what what would you say to an emerging filmmaker um especially if maybe from your perspective coming in as an illustrator and your trajectory of getting to film and then the length that you've had to work on this particular film um what would you what would you say to an emerging filmmaker um i think uh, maybe the most inner thing is to to trust in the, in in the um, intuition they, they they have that is the most important thing there is no one who can uh, tell you right or wrong if, if you are very close to this and uh, then persistence is, uh, i don't know how making films in canada is but here uh, for the perspective of all the friends that, that we share filmmaking uh, it, it it needs a, a lot of people believing of uh, for for a film to be made uh, uh, is difficult to access to to funding then it's difficult to to distribute uh, i think maybe always in the history of cinema is going to be difficult and it will be but uh, so maybe it's a part of, of our job and uh, persistent i find it very very important maybe i could add a um, opening to 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 to, 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 to be open, to talk to people, to understand different realities, eh, to read, to read because maybe you can't travel to different parts of the world, but you can travel inside. Um, uh, I don't know, I think also travel inside, <laughs> meditation, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I love that though, the tra the, it does, you know, it's perfect for, the thoughts around the film is like is to travel inside to get that relationship to a bigger understanding that connectivity um, and that spirituality that was so prevalent in the work itself. Well, I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining us tonight is a real treat and a real honor to share your film with not only our community, but with our audiences as well. And um, I appreciate it. we look forward to seeing more work from you. Thank you, thank you so much, Nikki. I'm very happy. I'm very. We feel honored to be here, to 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 be able to share events with people in Canada, to be in the closing night. We feel very honored, and uh, I hope um, people who watch the film uh, can be also a part of this uh, to 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 make a big family with it with. Uh, with this message maybe that the film holds. And uh, I can't say more than thank you very much. We are very happy. This is honestly my favorite part of the of the job is to be able to talk with artists and to hear um, all of the things that you're thinking about and your process and your methodologies and also where your mind goes both internally and what we get to see on uh, on the screen as well. So thanks for joining us tonight. And I just wanted to remind the audience is actually, um, you have 48 hours to watch this work. So you actually have till Tuesday um, to check out the film. So please do so, take out your leisure. It's a stunning, stunning piece of work and such a, an important, timely piece of work as well. Um, so thanks Jose for joining me. And I'm gonna actually invite Naomi and Jessica to join me on screen now. Where Thank, are you. These Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I just also wanted to say, as they're joining me, um, that you can, the artist choice. I mean, the artist choice awards are still open. So please go onto the festival website. You can vote for your favorite feature length or short length film. Um, you can vote as many times as you want, and to definitely just check it out. Then also, I just wanted to say thank you to MB. Um, to MBS Equipment Canada and Bank of Montreal for supporting both of those uh, awards with $2,500 each. It's so incredible to be able to share and give more money to artists is our favorite thing to do here. Um, and I just have to say, I am quite moved by our team at Imaginative. Personally, I really can't express how happy I am about the 
the success of the festival and it's a direct result of your hard work and plus you make it so much fun to come in every day and to the artists um, so much love to you all congratulations for trusting us and continue to share and continue, continue to tell your stories i think i've heard a couple of times this week that um, a real essence of the work is love and we do definitely feel that and I hope the audiences feel that as well. Um, and so I'm going to hand it off now, I think, to Jess. Marcy, I uh, thank you so much. We've, we're, we're rocking our glow. It's the last night of the festival. <laughs> and so I just want to say on behalf of all of us at Imaginative, we want to thank every single one of you for joining us this week and making this festival the success that it has been to all of our artists, our staff, our board, volunteers, interpreters, supporters, friends, and audiences. We are now saying our farewells. So many thanks, Marcy, and I pass it over to you, Naomi. Yes, thank you, Nikki. Thank you, Jess. Thank you to all our artists, staff, board, everybody. Like there's just, it's a huge list and we are very honored and we feel really loved. Thank you all. Um, so now to close this out officially, we're gonna have a few words from Imaginative's cultural advisor, the lovely and beautiful grandmother Pauline Shirt. Nyawa. Bonjour, the way I'm gonna do. And then keep going, this Nikas, you wanna send it to them. We send our great thanks to all our spirit helpers and ancestors from the four directions for being here with us. I hi to Wabin. I hi to Zawin. I hi to Kunigan Bien. I hi to Giwe Din. I hi to Midei Gisus. And I hi to Kigawi No. Once again, it's been a wonderful gathering of our people. The staff and volunteers of Imaginative have again in this challenging time brought us together to share our stories, to learn from each other and grow. A great big thank you to Naomi Johnson for her wonderful work and commitment to bring in the spirit of our people out to shine. Blessings to you all. May you stay healthy and safe. I hi, hi, cucum shirt. <laughs>